In this video, I'll explain the different types of leases under ASC 842, financing and operating, and then I'm going to give you the secret recipe for the journal entries. So let's take a look first at what a financing lease is and what an operating lease is. So in this slide, we see that we have financing leases and operating leases. Now, historically, under 840, ASC 840, we've had capital leases. Going forward under 842, we'll now call those financing leases, and we've had operating leases in the past. We'll continue to use that same name. So before I tell you the definition of a financing lease, let me just say that Whatever agreements you have, the lease agreements you have that are not financing leases, they will be operating leases. So we need to know what a financing lease is uh, so that we can know not only what those are, but what an operating lease is as well. So let's look at what constitutes a financing lease. One it's one that transfers ownership by the end of the lease. That makes sense. Again, you know, one of the things that we see here with the financing lease, it's almost as though the entity has bought the asset. So if you keep that thought in mind, it'll help you understand the financing lease definition. Now, it doesn't mean the, the entity has bought the asset, but it's going to feel that way. So if you have a lease agreement where ownership transfers by the end of the lease term, it's a financing lease. If there's an option to purchase that underlying asset and it's reasonably certain that that would be exercised, that would be a financing lease. If the lease term is for a major part of the, the remaining economic life, then that would be a financing lease. Then we see this kind of old rule where we look at the present value of the future payments, and if those exceed 90% of the fair market value, then it's a financing lease. Now, again, ASC 842 doesn't say 90%, but if the present value of those payments it exceeds substantially all of the fair value of the underlying asset, then it's a financing lease. I just like to keep these rules in the back of my mind. It helps me. And then finally, and this is new, if the underlying asset is real specialized and it, it really wouldn't have any use to the leaseor at the end of the lease, then that would be a financing lease. Now, so we said if it's not a financing lease, it's going to be an operating lease. We see that on this slide. So look first, is it a financing lease? If it's not, then it's an operating lease. There's your two types of leases. Now we're going to look at uh, the journal entries, and this is where it gets really interesting for each of these types of arrangements. First up, let's look at the operating lease journal entry. And what we're going to do here to come up with the debits and credits, first thing we're going to do is determine the lease expense amount. You may be wondering, well, uh, how do I do that? So how do you arrive at the straight line lease amount for operating leases? What you're going to do is look at the lease agreement. And here's an example. Let's say it says you're going to pay $10,000 a month for the first 10 years. And then the amount to be paid goes up 5% for years 11 through 15. Then it goes up 7% for years 16 through 20. Then you're going to take the total of all of those payments and divide it by 20. And that would be the straight line amount. Now, if it's monthly, obviously we need to divide by 12 each year. 
to come up with that straight line lease amount. But this is how you arrive at the lease expense amount. So with that thought in mind, we've got the straight line lease amount. And what we're going to do is we'll take the straight line lease expense and we'll subtract the interest expense to back into the right of use amortization. Now, I say that's a plug because it's a plug. So that's how you arrive at the right of use amortization amount. And whatever that number is will be a credit to accumulated amortization for the right of use asset. So the operating lease journal entry is a debit to lease expense on a straight line basis, a debit to the principal paid, a credit to the cash paid, and then we just saw how we arrive at the ROU accumulated amortization credit. Again, take straight line lease amount, subtract the interest expense, and that will give you the number that goes here. Now, these two numbers comprise the lease expense. On the income statement, you're not going to see interest expense and ROU amortization. You're just going to see lease expense, and it will be for this amount in this example. That's different for the financing lease entry. So let's take a look at the financing lease entry. And here it is. We see an amortization expense and uh, a debit to the lease principal paid and also an interest expense. On this transaction for financing lease, we're going to see in the income statement a debit to, for or an amount for amortization expense. We'll also see interest expense. On the operating lease, we'll just see lease expense. But here we see these two expenses. So in this journal entry, it really is much like the capital lease entry we made under ASC 840. The, the only difference here, in the past we had depreciation expense, now we have amortization expense, and that amortization is in relation to the right of use asset. So let's go over this entry again. Debit to amortization expense, debit to lease, lease principal paid, debit to interest expense, and of course, the principal and interest just come from the amortization, nothing hard there. The amortization expense is simply the right of use asset divided by the term of the lease. It's a straight line number. It doesn't change. On the operating lease entry, that right of use amount changes every month. Here it does not. And so you see it looks much like the old capital lease entry. Now I'm going to go back to the operating um, lease entry real quick. And again, you can see there's a right of use amortization, but it's inside of the lease expense. That's not the case on the financing lease entry. We just have amortization expense and interest expense. So in summary, we will have financing leases and operating leases. We saw that in order to define what an operating lease is, you need to know what a financing lease is. And the financing leases are going to be longer term. They feel, they feel as though the entity is buying the asset and it's being financed with the lease. The operating lease is a shorter term those are arrangements where the entity, by comparison, is using that asset uh, for a shorter period of time. So there you go, the differences in financing leases and operating leases under ASC 842. Hope that helps, and until I see you again, take care, and bye now.